Hello everybody and welcome to the Tom Collihue YouTube and Twitch channels where today we are talking about the latest round of WWE releases which affected primarily NXT. The WWE has released quite a significant number of people from NXT 2.0, primarily people that, and I'm going to be blunt here, they determined were not future stars in WWE or at least future stars in wrestling. The WWE, particularly Vince McMahon, determined that all of the following names did not have the necessary star power to make it in the WWE. The names include Dakota Kai, Malcolm Bivens, Dexter Loomis, Persia Perotti, Draco Anthony, Raylan Devine, Sanjana George, Harland, Mila Milani and Prage Prinzivali. That is a considerable amount of names some of which have not really featured much in WWE programming, NXT programming particularly, but some, particularly uh, the names Dakota Kai, Malcolm Bivens, Dexter Loomis, Persia Perotti and Harland, have been featuring quite heavily over the last few weeks. Harland, for example, is somewhat involved in a main event level program at the moment, which is making the whole thing very confusing to me, I must admit. Now, going through these one at a time, I will be giving some details on the release of each and every one of them, and then I will start answering questions that are coming in on Twitch and on YouTube, so please do bring your questions in as I run through this list. Dakota Kai is the first one I want to talk about. I've spoken for a while about people in dark matches before Raw and SmackDown. <laughs> Pardon me. And what I've been saying, essentially, is that they are putting on a showcase for Vince McMahon, for Bruce Pritchard, for John Laurinaitis and the like, essentially as a way of saying, look, you're ready to call me up. Everyone who appeared in those dark matches was someone that the WWE wanted to call up. That includes, for example, Bron Breaker, whose call up was canceled. He was planned to have a call up after WrestleMania. It was canceled due to an increasing need in NXT. This essentially is a payback for that. Dakota Kai had a number of dark matches before Raw and before SmackDown, and I can confirm what Dave Meltzer has been reporting. Someone in the WWE camp, Dave Meltzer mentions Vince McMahon, I do not have the name to be blunt, was not interested in what Dakota Kai was delivering. I don't know how that's possible. Dakota Kai, as far as I'm concerned, was the best female wrestler on NXT. It stuns me, absolutely stuns me, that she has not been more heavily featured, but we are where we are with that one. As I say, I am very, very surprised, but we are where we are, and I certainly cannot predict what is going on there. Dakota Kai is someone that NXT talent and NXT management were very, very happy about and very, very excited for, but it just never actually happened. It never actually happened, and yet here we are with the whole thing just leaving a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Malcolm Bivens was next, and to be blunt, the WWE were never that interested in taking Malcolm Bivens to the main roster. While he did engender a uh, huge amount of interest overall when it comes to his social media style and antics and the like, he was never someone particularly popular when it comes to wrestling. And as far as the WWE are concerned, if you're not that hype as a wrestler, they are simply not interested in pushing you as a talent in any way, shape or form. So, if these things are not happening, it's because the WWE simply aren't that hyped and aren't that excited about making things happen for you. Malcolm Bivens was not someone that the WWE believed was particularly capable as a wrestler or they were particularly interested in using as a wrestler. Persia Perotti was very similar in a situation to Dakota Kai in that they uh, gave her tryouts, they gave her opportunities and they were simply unconvinced that there was anything that they could turn into actual genuine star power. The WWE, to be blunt, did not believe that there was star power in Persia Perotti, so they were not willing to push her any further than they did when she first arrived in NXT, the most recent storyline. Now, this shows a certain abandonment when you consider who else has been left behind in this one for certain characters. Certain characters essentially have been uh, forgotten about entirely and entire storylines have gone by the wayside. Dexter Loomis, also part of that storyline, is not someone that the WWE believed was main roster capable as a character. To be blunt, this is as a character. The WWE simply did not believe that he was main roster capable. 
The character of Dexter Loomis, they essentially booked themselves into a corner and they were not able to get out of that corner. There were several pitches made as to a character for Dexter Loomis on the main roster. None of them worked. Simply put, none of the pitches for new characters for Dexter Loomis were enough to convince the WWE proper that he was worth investing in, so they decided not to invest in him. Dexter Loomis has been let go essentially because Creative couldn't come up with an alternative character for him. Finally, the other one I have details on is Harland, and this is the most surprising one. The WWE brought him in, he was heralded as the next Brock Lesnar. However, to be very blunt here, I am told that he failed to impress anyone in NXT, not least the WWE. They're going to put more focus into Gable Stevenson. Gable Stevenson will get much of what the expected push was for Harland, and Harland himself simply did not impress the WWE enough or progress as much as they wanted him to to convince them to keep him around. As such, he was not kept around. Harland is not believed to have added anything to the Joe Gacy storyline. They have not been able to give him anything particularly uh, impressive creatively because they simply don't believe he is able to present himself as a WWE-level superstar. Sean says Dakota just won the tag belts not too long ago. The idea was to essentially push her further with those, but it just never seemed to happen. They never gave her the push that they kept expecting to. Michael says Dakota should have been women's champion. Spider Boss says Dakota Kai at least deserved a run as women's NXT women's champion as well. So a lot of people are of, of that opinion. Michael says Fightful was reporting that Dakota made it clear she wasn't going to re-sign and had a year left. I guess you could say that they did her a favour and didn't waste a year. Dakota Kai, to my knowledge, had turned down a number of opportunities, primarily opportunities on the main roster. She was one of those who was most affected by the Twitch ban. It definitively impacted her in a negative way. And I feel one of the reasons that they've let her go at this point is because she eventually went back to Twitch without permission. Camonte Jackson says, why not let Dakota and Malcolm just finish out their contracts like AEW does with their talent? Because that would mean paying them for another year and they've decided they don't want to do that. Get the tables, welcome. Says, Fifle reported Dakota Kai let WWE know that she wasn't going to re-sign. Is that maybe a reason they let her go? Absolutely. If someone has let them know they don't want to be there and they have an excuse to let them go, they will absolutely do so. Dakota Kai was not going anywhere in that NXT uh, setup. She was not going to the main roster despite numerous uh, options to have that call up. And in addition to that, she went back to her Twitch without express permission. So essentially she drove the management the wrong way a little bit. They decided to cut their losses with it.